All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, wherever you're located. Um, thank you all for joining the Ozone Solutions Ozone Use in Seafood Facilities. Um, we wanted to put this package together for everyone so that um, not just seafood um, industry sees um, information about ozone, but there may be a lot of people that are just curious about ozone. So we wanted to put this together as a mo uh, just to provide some sort of information, a little bit about ozone, and then I'll dive into a couple of case studies um, and explain a bit about how ozone is integrated into seafood industry. Um, so yeah, we can get go ahead and get started. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm the senior VP of engineering here at Ozone Solutions. Uh, being in the ozone industry for about a decade, uh, being working closely with different type of integrators, different type of um, producers, uh, customers that basically integrate ozone into various applications. This one, we're going to show how ozone is integrated into seafood industries. It's all technically the same type of equipment, just tweaked to fit the right industry and the right customer's uh, application. So you'll see a lot of systems are very similar throughout um, this presentation. It's just tweaked for the customer's requirements. It's tweaked for the customer's footprint, goals, specifications. We, we basically listen to what the customer's needs are and try to integrate a system that would work for them. So a little bit about Ozone Solutions, um, just so that everyone gets an idea of who we are. So our mission is very simple, is to create a cleaner, safer, and healthier world by engineering green technology. So basically the reason why we call it green technology is ozone can be said or can be stamped as uh, an organic sanitizer or a disinfectant. So we look at how we can move away from chemical usage and integrate ozone into this. It could be wastewater applications, it could be seafood product, food sanitization, anything like that we try to integrate to provide a clean uh, chemical use organization or chemical provide, provide um, different type of ozone needs can help with different parameters for different customers. Our vision is to provide high quality products but also to work with organizations to clean air, purify water and disinfect food uh, without any type of chemical usage, but also safe technology. Ozone Solutions has been in the industry for about 25 years. Um, and we, we have a lot of field experience like myself. We have other engineers on staff. Uh, we have salespeople that actually ozone specialists. They actually specialize in ozone and basically integrate various systems throughout the industry. We have monitoring equipment that basically monitor the ozone device when we're looking at the future. Um, the next step I think that's going to take place is basically how we integrate systems without much human interaction or it's able to run by itself. So we have this remote monitoring system. I'll show you a couple of slides that help uh, customers view the system remotely and we can also do changes on the system um, sitting from our location and moving on to different type of um, custom customizability that we can integrate into a customer system. All of our systems are manufactured here in the United States and then we also have a three-tier service program um, and the we technically have a fourth and fifth tier as well that is completely customized for the customer's application. Um, we have silver, gold, platinum, and then we've started integrating others as well that we can have a sales or a service person at location, a QAQC person at location to do various sample tests as well. So depending on what your needs are, we can integrate a service plan for the system. And this is extremely crucial when we look at uh, QAQC, we look at the the reporting that is required by FDA, USDA. Um, we try to work with customers to provide a HACCP plan that's completely all-rounded and is also be able to integrate into uh, a high-quality, high-tech 
facility as well. So I'll give a little bit of background. Um, individuals that may be um, new to ozone, it's pretty simple. Um, ozone is three oxygen molecules. As you can see here, it's basically three oxygen uh, atoms that are put together that create that ozone molecule. Uh, ozone molecule is O3. So this is a naturally occurring gas that is available in our atmosphere. I'll just move this over here. So basically what happens is we have oxygen in our atmosphere. We have about 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and then 1% is like our rare gases and carbon dioxide. So what we do is we look at that oxygen uh, part of our atmosphere, and we basically break down the oxygen molecule. So if you just put your two fists together, um, these are an oxygen molecule. This is an oxygen atom. So what happens is if you provide enough energy, you can actually break this molecule apart. And this forms two different ions, um, or two different atoms. These atoms can then combine to another one to form ozone. So the oxygen molecule pulls apart, creates two oxygen atoms. This oxygen atom can go ahead and attach to an oxygen molecule. So that forms ozone molecule, O3, and this can be used for disinfecting. Um, the ozone molecule is not stable in its pure form. What it wants to do, it wants to either react or it wants to break down. That's why ozone is the strongest oxidizer to known to mankind. It basically wants to attach or remove that oxygen atom, that additional one that's on there. So you have your three, it's going to try to go ahead and attach to something so that it can go back to its oxygen molecule state. Okay, So O2, break apart. You have your oxygen atoms. Those oxygen atoms attaches to another oxygen molecule to form O3. This O3 molecule is the strongest oxidizer known to mankind and wants to react. Either react or break apart or attach to another ozone molecule to break it back into O2. So therefore, it's a strong oxidizer. And that's also a reason why ozone cannot be stored. When you produce ozone, you need to use it up or it basically converts back into oxygen. So as I said, um, once you have this ozone molecule formed, it can go ahead and start attacking different type of bacteria, different type of viruses, surfaces, disinfection, it can go ahead and react. It, you cannot tell ozone to go after a specific um, product. It's basically going to react with anything it makes contact with. So here we have um, an ozone molecule. You can see uh, on number two that there's three oxygen molecules in the air, and it's basically going to go ahead and react with this bacteria cell. What happens is normally a bacteria cell, if you have any other chemical, that chemical almost masks the bacteria to stop it or make it um, inactive. What we are doing with ozone, we're not masking it, or the bacteria can no more uh, create resistance to ozone because what we're actually doing is that ozone is actually penetrating the cell wall and breaking it apart and oxidizing. So you can see in picture one, full uh, bacteria cell, ozone comes along in picture two and reacts to and gets attached to the molecule that you can see or attached to the bacteria that's in picture three. That ozone is going to start eating its way through like picture four, and over time it's going to explode, go to picture five, and then completely dissociate and break down, you go to picture six. So that's what's happening. Ozone is reacting with the bacteria, with viruses, and creating the same phenomenon throughout. When you look at um, metals, it's, it's a little bit different what happens if you have iron or manganese. It's basically the additional oxygen molecule atom is getting attached to the iron and manganese to form an oxide. This oxide then can be filtered out. So there's different methods. Um, the ozone does different things depending on how pure or how reactive that product is. So ozone is... As I've said this before, it's the strongest oxidizer, it's a disinfectant, it's a sanitizer. It has to be generated on site. The reason is it's a it's a pro anacon is the ozone wants to react, either break down or react with the end product. So therefore, it has to be generated on site. 
There's different applications. Ozone that we generated because of oxygen, it's formed in a gas phase, and then we can take this gas and inject it into water to create aqueous ozone. So the gaseous ozone can be used to put into a confined space or even a stack where you inject ozone gas in, destroy bacteria, mold, any type of impurities that may be in the air, you can go ahead and can react with that and break it down or completely oxidize it so it drops down to the surface. With aqueous ozone, you can use it for bottled water. Basically, you sanitize the water, get rid of all the chemicals such as iron, manganese, chlorine, chlorides, whatever you have, ozone will go ahead and react to those. You filter it out and you get a really quality product in terms of your water. You can also sanitize product by over ozonating the, the water. So if you have an excess amount of ozone in your water, you can therefore go ahead and use that ozonated water to wash down surfaces. So I'll show you a couple of examples. We can sanitize like our floors, um, products, and conveyors, depending on various applications, all we do is we tweak the concentration. If we're just trying to treat ozone in the air, we put a low concentration. If we want to shock treat in the air, we go to a little bit higher of a concentration, we tell people to leave the facility. When we do gas aqueous ozone, let's say we just want to treat the water and make it high quality to use for drinking application, um, creating small amounts of water for like just drinking purposes, you just have to put a certain amount of ozone. Then as you go to sanitizing your floors, you can go to higher concentration. Sanitizing your product, you go to a higher concentration. And what this does is that you're able to create a diverse unit with just one simple unit and it can hit different spaces. So I'll, I'll touch base here on the ozone benefits in the seafood processing applications. So a lot of seafood processes either use PAA, parasitic acid, or they use sodium hypochloride. A lot of times the seafood gets flavorant from the chemicals that it's used. Because it leaves that coating or it has that flavor profile, it basically integrates seafood, is known for absorbing the smell or the taste that it's around. So what ozone does is it reacts and immediately disappears or it converts back into oxygen. So therefore, you don't have to rely on harsh chemicals, and it also controls the odor. And when we talk about odor, odor normally is generated when bacteria sits on the product. And as the bacteria eat through the product, you get off-gassing that happens. And what we are trying to do is trying to reduce that. A lot of times, companies are using ammonia or quartz for disinfecting. So basically using like a foaming agent to get rid of the slime layer on conveyors. Ozone will break this down. We're not just going to quote it. We're actually going to break down the layers because with slime, what happens is it grows in layers. You have your slime, you have your bacteria, you have your slime, you have your bacteria. So what happens is you need ozone to be constantly used so you can break down these layers. Ozone helps with salmonella. Campy, Listeria, E. coli, all bacteria um, perform in the same way. We are not going to create any type of resistance because we're not putting ozone as a coating effect. We're actually using it for breaking down that bacteria. Ozonated uh, water is used for is great for using direct or indirect product sanitization. And the greatest thing that ozone helps with it, it reduces the productivity of or it increase the productivity of a facility because you're shortening the cleaning time. Normally when you look at facilities and they do like a quartz or they use ammonia, you have to do a wash cycle in the beginning, a wash cycle with ammonia, and then a wash cycle at the end. With ozonated water, you, all you do is use ozonated water and you wash your whole facility. Well, everything goes to the drain, you can use the ozonated water for the drain and it's going to sanitize everything. You don't need to come back with the second wash after that. The ozone will break down all the bacteria and everything like that. One very crucial piece of advice is that 
when you have other chemicals, those chemicals go into your drains and increase your BOD, your wastewater management company calls you and say, hey, you guys are putting too much chemical down. You have to do all these tests. Ozone does the opposite. Ozone is, if you have ozonated water going to your drains, it's actually going to help with BOD, COD reduction. It's going to help with sanitizing your drains as well. So we do tell customers, just don't be afraid. Use ozone to actually wash every single piece of equipment that they have in the facility. So this is just an example. Um, this is what we show customers um, on different examples of where ozone can be used. You have a centralized ozone unit that creates this loop. So we create a loop throughout the facility with multiple drop downs. What this means is that you, you are able to control the ozone concentration throughout the whole facility without waiting for any ozone to be built up. So if you can imagine, there's a centralized unit like this picture on the left. Um, your ozone system sits in a corner um, and you have compressed air or the system can have compressed air. And from the compressed air, you make the ozone gas. Once that ozone gas is made, you can inject it into water and use that ozonated water for different type of applications. So we normally tell customers to create a loop around the facility and have multiple drop downs. The reason why we recommend that is that it allows customers to have a versatile unit, but also have ozone at different application points instead of trying to add an ozone system here and then just doing one or two processes. You can actually have it spread throughout the whole facility. So you can have um, like clean in process stations. So if you want to wash down um, your areas where you're cutting the fish or you're filleting, you can use ozonated wa uh, water to help wash your knives, wash your surfaces, and even wash the fish itself. You can also integrate it into different type of equipment. Various equipment require either water or some sort of chemical to help with lubricating the product, but also helping with sanitization. So a lot of times we integrate spray nozzles into equipment that help sanitize the product as well. We then take ozonated water and we also put it into conveyors as well. Um, we, we like to wash the conveyors one for reducing any type of bacteria or slime growth, but also product sanitization. We, we normally use spray bars. We spray on the top and we spray at the bottom to walk to completely coat the fish and sanitize the fish as well. This helps reduce chemical cost, reduces chemical cleaning time, and then also increases shelf life because you're breaking down the bacteria. The bacteria is not getting onto the fish, but also mold is something that a lot of facilities face. So also we can also get rid of mold and I'll touch base with the mold here in a little bit. So mold normally grows because of mold spores present in the air. So what we do is we create a system that can do gaseous ozone as well as aqueous ozone. It's up to a location. You can do the gas system alone, you can do the water system alone, or you can do the both together. But the gas system is integrated directly into the air um, stream. So therefore, like the HVAC can help with distribution of the ozone. There's two things that you need to be cautious of, or two main examples. One, there is an OSHA regulation for ozone. So it's a 0.1 ppm for an eight hour day for someone working in a facility. And what we do is we maintain ozone concentrations just below that OSHA regulation. So it's a 0 0.07 to 0 0.09. And therefore we're able to maintain ozone concentrations in the air that if there is any more spores, it'll basically react. If someone coughs or if there's anything introduced into the facility, we can go ahead and react with it immediately. When a lot of the facilities um, have issues with the, the odor in the facility, seafood is well known for the odors that's released from the fish or just storage. So what we do is this actually helps with the bacteria that are actually growing in the air, but also the mold that's growing there. So we go ahead, react to this and break it down so you don't have that fishy smell uh, coming out of your facility. And then we can actually set the ozone system to increase its concentration. So 0.1 ppm, when people are present, when everyone leaves for the day, we ramp it up to about 1 ppm. Sometimes we even push to the 10 ppm mark, uh, 10 ppm if you have a big issue with mold. So initially we'll do a higher concentration and then drop it down. 
But the whole idea is to eliminate any type of pathogens or mold that's growing, but also any cross contamination that may be happening from one facility bringing in it. A lot of times you buy fish from another vendor and bring it into your facility for processing. So we it helps with cross contamination by having this ozone in the air as well. So those are the big two. Um, order reduction is uh, something that a lot of companies want because they have office spaces in the front and then at the back they're doing the processing and they just don't want the order when someone's coming in to have those issues. So we do a couple of those with just shock treatment and ozone levels that people can be in. This is perfect for reaching hard areas. So like if you have uh, edges, corners underneath the conveyor, you have cracks in the wall, you have drains. It's great for that ozone gas to find its way through parts where it's difficult to sanitize. Storage rooms, dry packing rooms. What happens is you can't use water for sanitization. So it's nice to have ozonated uh, gas with um, in the cooler rooms or in this facility just so that you can get some sort of sanitization taking place. So this is a quick um, idea of how we generate ozone. So we take air from the atmosphere, as I said earlier, 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. We remove that nitrogen element using the, an oxygen concentrator, and that increases our oxygen concentration when it goes into our ozone generator. We go from a 20% oxygen to about a 90 to 95% oxygen. This allows us to get a higher ozone concentration that can be used for your process. It's a lot cheaper than using liquid oxygen or even just using a high uh, compressed airstream. So we create ozone concentration between 5 to 10 percent, and we take this ozone and we integrate it into various applications. So you can see on the right hand side here, you have gaseous zone 1, 2, 3, 4. We have actually done systems that's the 12 gaseous zones. And what this means is it means different rooms. So you can do processing room one, processing room two, processing room three. And then you can even do like uh, storage rooms. You can do, let's say your um, off-all trailer, you want something in there. You can go ahead and integrate ozone into all these locations and then have um, ozonated water through your facility as well. How we do this is we actually put monitoring systems in all, each of these zones, and the monitor controls the amount of gas that's being put into that room. So you're able to set the ozone concentration, and it's not based off a calculation. It's based off an actual monitor that's reading the ozone concentration. Uh, very similarly, we can take a gaseous stream, like we said from here. Um, one of the gaseous streams, the last one here, can be sent to an injector. And basically what this means is as you have um, water from your city coming in, we can inject it into, um, we can inject ozone gas into that water stream. We, we have a contact tank that allows the ozone gas to actually um, stay in the water. And if there's any unwanted ozone gas, it off gases and we destroy the ozone gas. Otherwise it comes out, we measure the ozone level for the requirement that you have. So let's say you're talking about product sanitization, one to two ppm, we actually set the probe to one to two ppm. So that when it goes to your location, you actually have that concentration available for sanitization. You can always um, regulate that concentration. Let's say you're doing floor sanitization at night, you can go up to three or four ppm. Let's say you're working with tuna, you want to do a lower concentration, 0.5 to 1 ppm. This gives you the ability to control the system however you need. Um, and then, as I said, we create a loop. So this would go to your process, come back, and go back into the process of return. This is where we create a constant loop at your facility so you can have multiple drop downs. So we spoke about applications, um, but I want to touch base quickly on different type of applications, gaseous and aqueous. So you can actually think about your facility. That's the whole idea behind this webinar is see how ozone can help facilities, but also how does it integrate and can it be something that your facility can improve on? So aqueous applications, product sanitization, belt sanitization, flow and drain sanitization. If you have any totes like you putting ozone uh, or you have totes that you're basically storing your fish or have parts, you can always have someone come down with the ozonated hose and just wash down that surface. 
be completely free to do what you need to do. A lot of uh, companies have issues with, or facilities have issues with knife sanitization. That's a lot of the times where the contamination happens. So we normally have like a, a spray bar in, uh, in a bucket, and basically that's a constant water flow, and the, the, the employee just basically sticks their knife in there after every cut. So stick, washes one fish, and sanitizes it, and just keeps this on a loop. Therefore, the knife is completely sanitized. And this also helps with the gaseous side. In case they forget, hey, I'm san I need to sanitize my knife, they forget and they just have it sitting out. Basically, the ozone gas that's in the atmosphere will help with sanitizing different type of equipment as well. So you do your processing areas, you do your, your office spaces, any type of room that needs some sort of sanitization, but also like a gas sanitization, like let's say a stack. You have a facility that has um, a, a stack that's blowing air to the outside and uh, residential people are complaining about the odors. You can always integrate an ozone system to help with the odor reduction going out of your facility. So I'll just quickly touch on different type of applications you can see here. So equipment and belt sanitization, we always talk about using ozone in a spray application. You don't want to do a dip tank because when you do a dip tank, that oxygen, the ozone converts back into oxygen and bacteria love oxygen. So it just becomes a feeding ground for the bacteria to be in. And every time you pass uh, fish through it or any type of product through it, it just gets coated with this bacteria. So you're actually helping it grow. So we do the, we we highly recommend using a spray bar, letting the water drain out and going into your drain. So we always recommend uh, a handheld low pressure aqua spray, and as I said, spray on the top and spray at the bottom. Um, for product sanitization, so there's different concentrations. I always tell um, individuals, is it soft or is it hard? And a lot of people question, what is this? So is it soft to touch or is it hard? So a hard surface would be wood, concrete, conveyor. You can go to a higher concentration. Anything soft, fish, let's say we're talking about um, apples or anything that's a little bit of a softer feel, um, go to a lower concentration between 2 to 3 ppm. Harder surface, you can go to 2 to 4. Dependent on what product you're sanitizing, and we can work with each customer on this, is dependent on the type of fish we can recommend different ozone concentrations. I'll give you an example with tuna. Tuna is very susceptible to um, ozone or any type of chemical. So what we do is we reduce the ozone concentration to 0.5. And what this actually does is it helps redden the meat. Whenever you go to a market, the redder the tuna is, the more everyone feels like it's, it's a better product. So what we do is when we put the 0.5 ppm, it, it helps sanitize the product, but it also increases the color content of it. And therefore, it's a better um, product at the end of the day. If you're looking at different type of fish, um, you can go salmon, you can go a little bit higher, 1 ppm, 2 ppm. So different fish, different applications, we will tweak the ozone concentration for you to get a complete success for that application. Air treatment, same thing. Um, we do concentrations, shock treatment, or co uh, normal concentration. So the, as I said, the OSHA recommendation or the regulation is 0.1 ppm for an eight-hour day. When we are trying to maintain ozone concentration in a room, we do 0.07 to 0.09 in the room. It helps reduce cross-contamination odors and also hard-to-reach areas. Like as, as you can see in this picture, shelving, a lot of times, a lot of facilities don't sanitize that area. But that's where bacteria starts to grow when you when you don't sanitize these areas. Then it starts growing in there as your doors open. It cross contamination keep, happens. So therefore, we put ozone in these locations so that you're able to maintain a sanitization level throughout your whole facility. So as I said earlier, um, we talk about this remote monitoring. We talk about how can I get access to my equipment and make sure that it's always working because FDA, USDA, they're always asking these questions about, hey, how do you know you're actually providing a sanitizer or providing product on there? So I pulled this picture here. So what we do is we work very closely with QAQC. As this is a sanitizer and disinfectant, we, we work closely with them to help them provide reports so that they don't have any issues or they're able to integrate this into the HACCP plan. 
So for this application, we we tried to maintain three and a half ppm, probably doing floor sanitization. And we were trying to make sure that the system hits three and a half ppm throughout the day. Um, so this is at night. You can see it's seven o'clock at night all the way till midnight. And they were using ozone throughout the facility. What happened at 7.35, 7.45, that was a break, 15 minute break. So basically everyone turned off the water supply and the ozone concentration went up. But within a few seconds, it came back down. A few minutes, it came back down. And then when everyone came back, they could use ozonated water again. So the system is able to think by itself, but it also provides us with a snippet of what actually happened. Normally you would see a high alarm, low alarm, and everyone would freak out, but because you have this, you're able to actually see, hey, what happened? The remote service or what, what we can do with that is we're able to make changes on your system if you see any issues happening. Let's say we just need to tweak it and drop the concentration or increase the concentration. Someone forgot to change or someone changed a couple of parameters. We can always go in and log in and change those information. The alarm and alerts is great. This allows individuals to know if the system is running or not, and it allows us to actually know if you guys need help before you actually know you need help. So we're able to log into the system, make the changes, and actually we took, we call customers before there. A lot of customers say, how do you guys know this? We say, hey, we were looking at your system. We saw that you guys changed this parameter. You're below the ozone concentration. We need to increase it. Is it okay if we can? So they're like, all right, go ahead, and therefore we can go ahead and make changes on the fly on the system. So there's a lot of integration that goes into the ozone system, but at the end of the day, we're looking to provide a complete solution, not just equipment, but something that we can partner along, but attach some sort of information that you can get out of the unit. So what happens a lot of the time, right? We, we talk about what can your system do? So different customers, different applications, different price ranges. We always try to see how we can integrate ozone into different applications. So this is a case study. A customer came to us and said, hey, I'm a startup company. I just want to use ozone to see if it works. So what we did is we gave, we, we have rental systems. We said, okay, why don't you try out the mobile zone 20? It's a mobile unit. You can use it for washing down your fish, your surfaces, anything like that, you can use it for tote wash, and then let us know what you think about it. Once you get comfortable with those, we can integrate to a larger system. He said, okay. So we rented a mobile zone 20. Um, he used it for a month and said, I'm in love with this unit. Let's go ahead and build a stationary unit for his whole process. So we sent engineers down, we designed a whole system for his application, and then integrated a full ozone system. So we went from the mobile zone system to a water zone, and we also did, he didn't want to integrate the ozone gas with that unit, he wanted a separate unit, so we did an HVAC unit. So the ozone system was integrated into the HVAC and constantly created ozone. So um, this customer um, said that he wanted to move away from chemicals and wanted, it. he was very conscious about the safety in their food and make sure that he's integrating some sort of chemical sanitizer or some sort of sanitizer in his process. So there, that's why ozone was a perfect fit for him. So as I said, price is always a concern for customers, but what is more crucial to us is the way we install it, make sure that we have proper equipment at a customer's location. We provide advice and service, and even if we don't sell a unit, we are completely fine with that. The whole idea is to make sure that the customer is comfortable with ozone. Ozone as an industry, um, we've been in the industry for 25 years. The whole goal is to make sure that the customer has a successful experience using ozone. So this this is an example of what he decided. He went with the gold service plan. He decided he wanted to use the ozone system. He used ozone gas. Um, and th that's the goal at the end of the day is to integrate a system that is an all around system. Okay. Um, and then a couple of units. So as I said, the mobile zone unit, you can see there, a lot of people love that unit for uh, a lease or rental. You can take this unit, use it for a month, see how you like it. If you don't like it, ship the unit back and you're only out the rental cost. 
But if you actually love that unit, we can always integrate that with a larger unit to the dual zone that can do gaseous and uh, ac gaseous and aqueous, or we can do just a water system that's completely just water. So depending on what the customer feels is right for the application, we can integrate into that. We have um, the rental line, leasing line, uh, custom ozone system. Let's say you need it to fit a specific floor, floor plant. We can make that work. Um, if you have to vent it, anything like that, we have engineers on staff that can help you with integrating the ozone system. Service is actually very crucial. A lot of people ask, hey, how do we integrate the ozone system, but what type of maintenance am I going to have in the future? So we actually have uh, service kits that we provide to customers. So you do a three month service trip uh, kit, six month, nine month, 12 month, and then you get a yearly package. And basically we ship these to you. You can easily have your service techs make those changes and then throw those parts away. Or we can come down to your facility and actually change them for you. So different plans, different requirements um, can be met. It's we, how I always say it to customers, it's like a car. You have to do your oil change. You have to do your filter change. It's the same way about this unit. You do your oil change, you do your filters, you replace the check valves. The system is going to last 20, 25 years, 30 years. If you don't change the check valves, you don't, you don't keep the unit up to date. Basically, it's not going to last you more than five years. So keeping up with the unit allows you to have a longevity of that unit itself. We have a couple of locations. Um, we have Arkansas, Iowa, and Texas. Just, just a little bit about ozone solutions. We have people all around the United States to help. So just let us know where you're located and we can try to figure out how we can get to location and have a face-to-face -face meet if that's something that's needed. Um, if you're worried about any type of issues or any type of reporting, any type of compliancy, just to reach out to us, um, EPA, FDA, USDA, OSHA. We worked along a lot of these companies. Um, we've actually worked with them to help set these regulations as well. So there's there's a lot of things that people are kind of um, scared to move into a new topic because it sounds too good to be true. That's why we do the lease and the rentals. And we have these webinars so people actually learn about it. But there's a lot of additional thoughts that we can help. We can do uh, site uh, evaluations, we can do consulting during an installation. Even if you're generating a brand new plant, we can integrate into that as well. Um, any type of monitoring. Um, we are completely based here in the United States. We sell all over the world, but our systems are in the United States and it does come with the United made in the United States system. OK. So I do have a list. Um, you can always reach out to myself at just patel at ozonesolutions.com. But if you'd like specific needs, if you need to talk to a salesperson, you can reach out to sales at ozonesolutions.com. If you want to reach out to a service tech or need service help with on your, on your ozone system, you can always reach out to service at ozonesolutions.com. If you have just any simple questions or any questions about ozone, you, you can always feel free to reach out to me. My email is patel at ozonesolutions.com, P-A-T-E-L at ozonesolutions.com. And we can um, discuss any type of questions that you may have. Okay. I will check here. Um, we can do a QA section here, um, see if anyone has any questions. If you do have any questions, please feel free to add them to the QA section. Um, I did send that earlier to everyone as well. Okay, I do see some questions here. Okay, um, so one of the questions is, what are the advantages of using ozone over traditional sanitizing method in seafood processing? So, thank you, uh, great question. Um, the basically different type of chemicals provide different value to a processing application. So if you're using like a chloride or using ammonia, you have, most of the time you have to do a secondary wash. Also, when you do product sanitization, you are, that fish or your product can actually absorb that flavor profile. What we try to do with ozone, we try to stay away from affecting the fish in any way, but also creating a, a system that helps you speed up your cleaning cycle. So the, the main advantages I would say is definitely reducing 
chemical cost um, because it's not a monthly purchase that you have to do. It's a one time purchase, but also you, you're reducing your time that you're actually using on the chemicals. Also um, helping with reducing your your safety in terms of safety wise, like bringing chemicals to your facility and moving that out, it just becomes a HACCP issue. So what we normally do is we have a system and you don't need to worry about any other chemicals after that. Um, yeah, I do have a question here. Are there any uh, available validation studies for pathogens using ozone that is available to read? Yeah, so ozone solutions is part of the International Ozone Association. Um, we have hundreds of white papers. Um, you just let us know what type of fish, what type of product you're looking at, and we can send you white papers that if there's a research out, out there, we can send that over to you. We also have a, a, a plethora of customers that are using ozone for their application. We can have them um, see what time works for them, and we can have a conversation between us three. You, you can call the customer directly, or you can have us involved, and we can discuss different type of uh, applications, different type of experiences that they've had with ozone. It may not be ozone solution system. It may be something else, but we working with them in service or have some sort of element to play with their system. What are the primary costs associated with ozone technology and how do they compare to a long-term savings and ROI? Okay, um, that's a good question. Um, so in terms of primary cost, you have the cost of the ozone system. Dependent on application-wise, it could be between 20,000, 15,000. We have cheap options available, but roughly that range. Um, and then it goes higher dependent on applications. If it's a large application, it increases the, the price of the unit. But dependent on application, we have multiple options where we can do a cheaper unit or a, a more sophisticated unit with ha that has more bells and whistles to it. So it just depends on customer's range. But at the end of the day, if you look at an ROI on a simple, like a, a let's talk about a water zone system. You can normally get an ROI between six to eight months. That's normally the sweet spot that we've seen uh, happen in the industry. So six to eight months, you'll see um, your full ROI on the system. The main thing, main cost is mostly electricity. And these system electricity wise, you're either looking at 110 or 220, about 30 to 40 amps. So it's not that big of a cost, but that is something we do take into consideration when we talk about ROI compared to other chemicals. Um, yeah, one other question here is that ozonated ice. Um, I didn't touch that point, but ozonated ice is something that is extremely crucial in the seafood industry. Um, what we do is your ice machine, you know, we like, we like to use flake ice machines. So we also sell flake ice machines, but basically what that's doing is we create ozonated water and flake ice machines creates flake ice immediately. So we're able to store ozone gas into the ice. What this does is when you're transporting your fish and this ice melts, you're creating ozonated water. Either it off gases or it reacts. With the off gas, there may be odors. It's going to get rid of those odors, but it also will have the ozone water that is going to help with reacting with the product. So you have different applications, either using it for off gassing needs or even just packaging and helping with sanitization. So that's very crucial when moving fish uh, from location to location or even just storing it. Ozonated ice have thin, thin flake ice, gives a higher surface area, doesn't create divots in the fish, but allows, well, while it melts, allows a constant sanitization. So yeah, seafood uh, is great with ice. Um, and one last question. Um, This one seems like a good one. How does ozone treatment um, impact texture quality in seafood? So as I said, concentration ranges. Dependent on your seafood, we set an ozone concentration for that. If you're looking at a softer fish, we do lower concentration. 
a harder fish, a little bit higher concentration. Flow sanitization, higher concentration. Conveyor, higher concentration. We normally work with the customer and try to figure out the right concentration, but this will not affect your product. And when I talk about product, I'm talking about not just your fish, but also your conveyor, your belts, your floor. I package that all as one, trying to not affect any type of material that you get in contact with. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining the Ozone Solutions webinar about seafood. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, thank you for joining. If you need anything, just reach out. Thank you. Bye.